We have a function and we have a domain that x should be between minus 3 and 3 and we want to find all of the extrema. Remember extrema are local maxima, local minima, global maxima, and global minima. So in order to do this, we know that global maxes and mins can occur, they could occur at the endpoints, so minus 3 and 3, or they could also occur at critical points and singular points. Local maxima and minima only occur at critical points and singular points. So we should really find those critical points and those singular points. So that means we need to differentiate f. Remember, critical points are when this is 0, and singular points are when it doesn't exist. Now this exists definitely between minus 3 and 3, actually, for all real numbers. So there are not going to be any singular points this time. They're just going to be critical points. So we need to figure out when this thing is equal to 0. And it's not necessarily immediately obvious. We're going to want to factor it. But if we stare at it long enough, we see that if we plug in 1, well, f prime of 1 is 0, so that's definitely one of the roots. And remember, we can use that to find the other roots. We can use that to factor it. If f of 1 is 0, that means x minus 1 is a factor. So we're just going to do a little work on the side here to figure out the quadratic factor. If I long divide x minus 1 into my function, or rather my function's derivative, then I find that my function is actually equal to x minus 1 times my quotient. And now I can factor it more easily. So now I know where I should check for my extrema. I have critical points 1 and negative 2. My endpoints are 3 and negative 3. And like we said, we have no singular points. It's usually easiest, if you have to find all of them, to start with the global extrema. Because for those, I just have to figure out the values of all those points. So I just plug these numbers into my function. Note my function, not my function's derivative. Now that I have these values, I'm ready to decide that, well, 4 is the smallest, so we have a global minimum at x equals minus 2, and 22 and 3 quarters is the biggest, so we have a global maximum at x equals 3. If I have a global minimum at minus 2, that means, well, notice that minus 2 is inside my domain. It's not an endpoint, so it could be a local minimum. And in fact, it has to be. Remember, a local minimum says I can draw some little circle around this point at minus 2, and in that little circle, nothing is smaller than 4. Well, actually, in the whole graph from minus 3 to 3, nothing is smaller than 4. So also, we have a local min at x equals minus 2. 3 and minus 3 can't be local mins because they're endpoints. So 3 is a global max, and minus 3 is nothing interesting. So the only thing left to do is investigate what happens at 1. Now to do that, we're going to want to look back at the derivative. Notice that this x minus 1 term is squared, so it's always positive. When x is equal to 1, the derivative is 0. That's what makes it a critical point. But if x is a little bigger than 1, the derivative is positive. And if x is a little less than 1, the derivative is also positive. So what we have going on at 1 is I'm up here at 10 and 3 quarters, and my derivative is pretty flat. To the right, my function is increasing, but also from the left, my function is increasing. So this is neither a local max nor a local min. So our extrema are at minus 2, we have a local min and a global min. And at 3, we have our global max. And that's it.